Life on Earth Scientists have been studying it for centuries, creating a timeline from when the first single-cell beings emerged in primordial waters to today, when billions of humans populate the surface. But there's one question they've never been able to answer with 100% certainty. How exactly did it begin? Most scientists think it started from a complex chemical reaction in the water of the early Earth. Some argue for a more intelligent hand guiding the process. The only thing that's sure is that no one's sure and everyone has an opinion. But what if the origin of life on Earth didn't actually come from Earth? Could life on Earth be the product of extraterrestrials? So far, we don't have any conclusive proof for or against life outside of Earth. No contact has been made and no DNA or fossils from other life forms have been discovered. But we've only explored a tiny fragment of the universe out there, almost none of it in person. And the odds that countless planets surrounding countless stars would have no other planets capable of supporting life since the Big Bang is pretty slim. And after billions of years of this universe existing, many of those worlds may not exist anymore. Asteroids, comets, and other interstellar phenomena can immediately bring a crushing end to any world's life forms, as the dinosaurs found out the hard way. But what if the life from those worlds didn't stay on those worlds? The hypothesis is panspermia, which claims that not only does life exist throughout the universe, but that it gets carried from world to world by traveling objects like asteroids and comets, the space dust that gets attached to anything traveling through space, even the spaceships that humans send to explore the moon and nearby planets may have microscopic forms of life in them that travel to other worlds and seed them when they land, creating the building blocks of future life on those worlds. But could anything survive in the cold vacuum of space? Well, we couldn't, and neither could most animals on Earth. But when you look at smaller animals, some survive climates that could kill humans in seconds. The Pompeii worm lives in deep hydrothermal vents that can reach up to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. The flatbark beetle, which lives in some of the coldest climates in North America, produces natural antifreeze chemicals that help it survive in the winter and enter a sort of stasis, smoothly surviving the coldest parts of the winter while we're fighting over the thermostat. Neither of them could survive in space. But that's not the case for one microscopic creature. The name water bear probably creates cute images of an ursine mammal enjoying a bath in the river. But the real thing is much less cuddly, and also less likely to eat you. Also called a tardigrade, this tiny organism is the only form of life that seems to be able to live anywhere, even in the most extreme conditions. They've been found everywhere from deserts to hot springs and they may even potentially exist in space, thanks to a crash of a sample from a spaceship on the moon. These tiny multi-legged creatures can dry up and fall into a state that resembles death, but when exposed to water even decades later they spring back to life. So if life originated from outside Earth, how exactly did it get here? There are a couple of theories of exactly how these building blocks of life arrived on our ancient planet, most of them based around interstellar physics. One theory from a Swedish scientist in 1903 theorizes that the radiation pressure from stars can send particles through space, but this would only work for the smallest particles, and many if not all would be killed off by the radiation. But it's possible that alien bacteria or viruses could survive if shielded from UV radiation. The other main theory is that the particles that led to the creation of life were hitchhikers on rocks, coming into contact with Earth when the rocks crash landed here. While we know how asteroids, comets, and meteors travel through the galaxy, this is under far more extreme conditions than any life form has been known to survive, surviving in the vacuum of space for years on end before crash landing. But there is another theory, that the alien life forms didn't come here accidentally. What if the alien life out there was intelligent and advanced enough that they could have sent the building blocks of life toward Earth deliberately? The first possibility of this is accidental transport. On Earth, there have been countless cases of people throwing trash into the water and having it swept somewhere completely different, often endangering animal life in the process. It's possible that an alien civilization would have been advanced enough to send waste products into space and dump them on an uninhabited world that, thanks to the trace DNA on the waste, evolved into Earth as we know today. But other theories say that seeding of Earth might be much more deliberate. Directed panspermia is the idea that alien species created life on Earth via transport of organisms from their world. The idea of a deliberate seeding of this planet sidesteps a lot of the issues with the other theories, because the aliens would have been able to shield the samples for their trip, eliminating the threat that the journey through space or the cosmic radiation would kill off the organisms before they ever reach their target. The alien species, if advanced enough to send samples into space, would be able to send them at high speeds that would allow them to reach their destination in a more feasible time. So why would aliens want to seed our planet? 
The first possible theory is that the aliens were looking to secure and protect life in space by spreading it among a larger area. Even the strongest civilization could be felled by a natural disaster or a stray comet, and when life exists on more than one world, it's insured against the whims of the cosmos. Of course, that was three and a half billion years ago, and the odds are good that any alien civilization that seeded Earth at the dawn of our world would be long gone themselves by now. But what if they weren't? There have been many theories about aliens making contact with Earth, but thus far no conclusive proof has been found, regardless of how many people say they were abducted by a flying saucer. But if aliens are out there and may even have ties to the creation of life on Earth, then why haven't they made contact yet? One theory is that they simply don't want to. They're more than happy just to watch. This is called the zoo hypothesis, and it states that we're all essentially living in a giant terrarium. Whatever these aliens are, they have technology far beyond ours and they're perfectly happy watching us as our still primitive planet slowly evolves. If we don't know about their existence, it's because they don't want us to know. Yet. So are there any problems with this idea? Just one big one. Have you ever tried to get a group of people to agree on anything? Trying to get 10 people to agree on one place to eat is hard enough. Imagine how difficult it'd be to get an entire civilization to agree to keep a secret forever without any of them breaking the code of silence and broadcasting their existence to our human zoo. It would have had to last millions of years of humans and their ancestors existing, and likely countless generations of the aliens not breaking their own protocol. That's why many people say the zoo hypothesis resembles creationism and religious theory more than panspermia. But have the aliens truly maintained a hands-off approach all this time? A popular idea, but maybe not so popular among scientists, is that Earth has been visited repeatedly by advanced alien civilizations that may have interacted with humans before recorded history, called the Ancient Astronauts Theory. It often has ties to various religions. After all, how many religious texts refer to powerful and mysterious beings descending from the heavens and performing miracles? But is there any evidence of these interstellar visits? If you watch a program called Ancient Aliens, a lot. This popular documentary style series looks at evidence of alien interactions with humans with a particular focus on early civilizations and the idea that certain technology and buildings couldn't have been constructed by pre-industrial humans alone. They look at mythology of giants and gods, massive structures like the pyramids that show up across the world, and technology that seems too advanced for the time, like the massive clockwork Antikythera mechanism of ancient Greece. With 16 seasons and almost 200 episodes, there are a lot of believers, but just as many detractors. The ancient astronauts theory, and ancient aliens in particular, has been criticized for using selective evidence and disregarding the contributions of early native cultures. The construction methods for megalithic structures like Stonehenge, the Great Pyramids of Egypt, and the Mayan pyramids have been investigated and largely proven. While there's still a lot of mysteries surrounding ancient architecture like the giant stone spheres of Costa Rica, few of them seem to point to aliens, but that hasn't stopped the speculation from growing. We don't know for sure if aliens have visited Earth, but there's a chance that their DNA is still with us. We might be all descended from aliens if their organisms seeded our world eons ago. The most likely scenario if we evolved from alien microorganisms is that we're so radically different from the original species by now that there'd be no similarity anymore. If an alien species did seed Earth deliberately, then the odds are it didn't seed Earth with the most advanced form of life on its planet, but one of the smallest and easiest to transport. The continuum of life on Earth indicates that life likely started with microorganisms swimming in the water before turning into larger forms of life and eventually heading onto land, a far cry from the aliens who might have organized Earth's seeding. But could humanity's ties to alien DNA be a lot more recent? Many proponents of the ancient astronauts' theory suggest that the aliens may have continued to visit Earth up until the early days of humanity and may have actually bred with humans, leaving traces of their DNA in ours. While the idea of aliens on a pleasure cruise looking for some exotic party times might be relatable, especially if they have common DNA with those party kids who hit Cancun every spring break, there are a lot of holes in the theory. The aliens would have to still be around and in a similar shape billions of years after Earth was first seeded, and they'd have to be genetically compatible with humans despite those billions of years of evolution. So no, it's not very likely that your great 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 grandpa was an alien. But that doesn't mean this kind of interbreeding between humans and their distant relatives isn't possible. Recent studies indicate that human fossils have traces of DNA from ancient humans that preceded Homo sapiens. The more famous Neanderthals are in there, but so are an extinct species of archaic humans we know relatively little about. 
The Denise events, only identified in 2010 in Siberia, they have been identified from a few bones and teeth that are distinct from other species. When ancient genomes were sequenced for the first time, scientists found fragments of genetic code that didn't match up with Homo sapiens. Neanderthals were quickly identified, in fact, it's estimated that most humans besides Africans have up to 4% of trace Neanderthal DNA in their genome. No one knows exactly what population of ancient humans may be lurking in the recesses of the human genome, both ancient and modern. What we do know is that modern humans are a complex mix of influences that made us what we are. Could one of those influences be from beyond our solar system? We don't have proof of that yet. But the human genome is a mystery and we don't have proof that it's impossible either. For more on alien visitors, check out This Will Happen When the Government Confirms Aliens Exist. Or watch How Did the Dinosaurs Die? For more on the chaos objects from space can cause.